Hey everybody, how's it going? So today we're gonna get started on an A1989 that is not turning on. Let's see, fix this machine and make it work again. First thing to do is de-corona the machine. Die, Corona. Die. Die, Corona. Die. Die, beer virus. Die. It reeks of coffee. This definitely smells like the laptop of a drug addict. I say drug addict because I've dealt with many people, coworkers and employees, that will say and admit themselves, I cannot wake up without coffee. I cannot get my job done without an espresso. I cannot do this. So by their own admission, they are drug addicts. And I just kind of find it particularly interesting that it's totally okay and legal and cheap for one type of drug that changes your state of mind to exist in the way you make decisions, yet it is illegal for others to exist. But such is the world that we live in. So let's see what this does. As always, I am going to unplug the battery, battery cable, plug this in, see what we get. Coffee smells disgusting too. So we have 5 volts, 200 milliamps. Now we have 19 volts, 83 milliamps, 64 milliamps, 200 milliamps, 197 milliamps, 466 milliamps. The fan is spinning. The fan is not spinning. Seems like there's crap inside the fan, and we're stuck at 200 milliamps. The Rossman repair guide you made is fantastic. Thank you, James. I'm glad that someone's making use of it. You know, one of the things that got me to stop teaching courses in person is how discouraged I got when I realized that people that paid to take a class with me would not take the time to read that guide. That was incredibly, incredibly depressing. All right, so it's turning on. 200 milliamps, fan spinning. This thing's probably booting. Most likely, if the liquid got near the screen cable, we're not getting a picture on the screen because this, the data line w was destroyed which I'm guessing is the case here, and we're going to take a look and confirm that in a moment. First thing we're going to do is turn on Paul Daniels' software. I know. It's a last resort. No backlight voltage. So I'm going to unplug this thing, and we're going to take a look at the screen cable area. I can already see that there is some corrosion around the CPU MOSFETs over here, so that means it's not far-fetched to think that corrosion got under there. Now, the way this works is that the backlight line for screen backlight, which is about 50 volts, is right next to the CPU data line for image, which is about 1.7 volts. And because this is a fucking MacBook, because this is a MacBook, they put them right next to each other. In every other computer that I've ever opened, they do not put the 1.7 volt image data line that goes straight to the CPU right next to a 52 volt power line that is designed to power a backlight. Like lowest voltage line for data, highest voltage line for backlight. And in the MacBook, they do that. I can show you how this looks on the schematic in a moment and then I will show you what it looks like on the board, and then I will tell you what the prognosis is for our customer. So let's go through that here. So if we take a look at the board, you'll see that the screen connector is going to be right over here. Hmm? Right here. J8500 is for EDP connector, which stands for Embedded Display Port, not Emotionally Disturbed Person, although admittedly you would have to be an emotionally disturbed person to be responsible for the design of this product, as I will showcase once I have the connector on the screen. If you take a look here, you have the backlight line, PPV out SO LCD Bicklet, and that's going to be right next to EDP int aux, which is a data line that goes to the CPU for the picture. So take a look over here. So you have backlight, image. Backlight, image. Now where does image go? Image goes straight to the CPU. Now do you think that the CPU likes getting 50 volts? No, it does not. And here's what it's going to look like on the machine itself when this happens. And by the way, one of the things that you should be aware of 
It's not like this connector where they have 52 volts right next to one volt is in some hidden away part of the computer. It's in the very, e right here, right on the edge where the coffee is going to spill into. See this? Look at this. So this over here is where 52 volt backlight, 1.7 volt data. 52 volt backlight, 1.7 volt data. So it's not that the computer is not turning on, it is turning on, but it has no image. And there's nothing in between that CPU data line and here. No choke, no nothing. Just straight to the CPU. So the CPU needs to be replaced on the board. Now, do you think I can just call up Intel and get the CPU? No. Do you think, like, are, are distributors lining up to make these for sale to people like me? Not really. So what you need to do is you need to go on AliExpress and pay two to six hundred bucks for a CPU of questionable quality that for all you know is ripped off of another dead board and solder it onto here. A, very high risk because you don't know if what you're buying actually works. B, very expensive, so customer is going to give you a middle finger. All of this could have been resolved if the person designing this pinout thought to themselves, for just a second, maybe, just maybe, it's a bad idea to have the 52 volt power line right next to the 1.7 volt data line when that's right on the edge of the computer where liquid is going to fall in on a device that has no liquid resistance. But I'm no engineer, so what do I know? Thank you, Jay Kurtz. So this machine needs a CPU. Probably going to be a very unhappy customer. But what are you, what are you going to do? What you going to do? And you know what the funny thing is? They started designing this thing in 2016. It's 2020. And the MacBooks that Apple are making now in 2020 have this exact same design. Exact same design! 52-volt power line, 1.7-volt data line. Right next to each other.